Hey guys, welcome back to the game room. Today I'm going to be taking a look at Tokaido. This is a 2-5 player board game by Anton Baza, who actually just won the Spiel des Jahres for Hanabi, a game I've also done a review on. Before I started the review, I wanted to give a quick shout out to uh, what is now my friendly local game store, Alpha Strike Games, here in San Marcos, Texas. Uh, they formerly sold just Magic the Gathering cards, but have recently expanded to uh, include a lot of different board games, things like that. That's where I picked this up from. I'm really happy to have a local board game store that actually is locally owned and operated, and uh, they are going to be expanding to a new location pretty soon. So uh, in the description below, I'm going to throw their current address, and I'll show their future address as well. And uh, if you're around the San Marcos, Texas area, definitely check them out. Uh, they have a really good selection of board games and a ton of magic cards and singles to check out as well. So definitely take a look at that. Now on to the game itself. Takaido is a game of a path. Takaido itself is a road in between Edo and Kyoto in ancient Japan uh, that pilgrims would walk back and forth on exploring and, and looking at the vistas and going to hot springs and sh souvenir shopping and things like that. And in the game, the players do that exact same thing. They take control of different characters with different powers and they pretty much walk the path all the way from Edo to Kyoto or vice versa and buy things, uh, explore things and take pictures of things, or not take pictures, I guess, see the vistas as the cameras run around. So let's take a look at the game itself. Let me give you an idea of how it's played, and I'll give you my opinion on it. So here I have the board set up. Uh, you can see most of it. There's a little bit off over to this side. It's a little off camera, but it's a very long board. And the big thing that attracted me to this game to begin with was the really great art style. Uh, I feel like the even from the box cover here, uh, with its really wonderful use of white space compared to the actual really vibrant colors of the city itself or the, the road itself. And the board kind of continues that with these really nice minimalist looks. I'm a really big fan of the art style. You have the path itself here, which follows a bunch of little dots. You have uh, the temple zone up here, which is where you'll track how much you donate to the temple, which I'll talk about in a bit. The different cards here, which will be the uh, souvenir cards, the hot spring cards, encounter cards, and food cards. We'll go through these. Over here are going to be the panorama cards. And up here is the score tracker, which is just a little zigzag score track. And this is where your players start. Or they can actually start on the other side as well. It doesn't really matter. It's, it's not symmetrical, but it's about exactly the same. And they tell you you can start on either side. So... Uh, it, it totally works either way. We've played it both ways. Works just fine. Let me actually focus in a little bit on uh, specific areas of the board since it's so, so long here, and I'll give you an idea of what each spot actually means. Here we're looking at the first leg of the trip. This starts at the end point here, which is a village where you get food, and it, the first leg goes to the next village where you get food. You don't actually get food on your beginning of the game here, which is just how we determine the order of players. Now in Takedo, the important thing is the last person in, or in the order here, which is green, will actually be moving first. And when you move, you can move on any space that's open in between here and the next village, which will be at this spot here. Now, the one caveat to that is that you can't move backwards, so once you've passed the spot, there's no going back. Let's just kind of go through each of the spots to give you an idea of what each of them mean. So the very first spot we see here is this black object here, which is a souvenir shop. Uh, let's say Green decided to go to the souvenir shop. The souvenir shop means you get to draw three souvenir cards, which are those black cards we looked at earlier, look at them, and buy one or more of them. And you'll have coins to start the game, and these are each going to cost two in this case. Now there's, as you can see, there's a few different symbols here. There's actually four different symbols on these cards. You'll have an accessory, clothing, uh, food, and uh, there's like an, another item there as well. And we get a few different types here, just to give you an example of them. Got some clothing, got some food. But anyway, you'll actually be making sets of these. So let's say we go back to the first three we drew there. We got these three to choose from. I think I actually replaced one of them, sorry. Uh, and you can choose to buy one or more. So you'll start, this. since this is our first souvenir shop, we'll be starting a set. So I could buy this. And you notice this one, three, five, and seven. When you're creating a set, you'll play that in front of you and you'll score however many points as much, as many as it is in that set. So you have to have one of each different type for a set. So this will just be worth one point. Now, if I did buy one of these other items, since they do have different symbols, we have a piece of clothing and an accessory here, I could buy this uh, Yukata, and that would be worth one point for the food, 
and then three point for the clothing because that's the second different card in the set. Now say I did have the money for this as well, uh, I could also buy that and this would be worth five. So total, this would be worth one, three, five, so that's nine points total. An entirely complete set is worth up to 16 points, the last ones were seven, and you can start multiple sets throughout the game. So uh, that's what souvenirs do. So let's say green moves there, purple can now move. Now if I was purple I could jump way far ahead if I wanted to, but obviously I can go back. So let's just, for the purposes of the tutorial, do this. We're going to move to the, this spot, which is a temple. And as you can see, it will match this spot up here as well. Let me just slide that in. And what this means is on a temple, you can donate coins from your supply to the temple itself, up to three coins. And these are what the coins look like. This will also be how you buy other items as well. Uh, they're really cool little coins, actually. A little hard to punch out because of the little squares, but I really like the like the coins themselves. So let's say I wanted to donate three coins, and I just put them over here on my color spot. I'm purple. And that would give me three points on the track immediately. Now, this will have, this will matter at the end of the game as well, so we'll, we'll come back to that in a bit. But you can do that on any of the temple spaces. Now, yellow's turn to move here, so we're going to move up to the pink spot. The pink spot is what's called an encounter. So encounter cards are these pink back cards. And they'll have a random encounter on them that do different things. In this case, you encountered a samurai, which is just three automatic points. There's other different types of encounters as well, and they run the gamut of collecting a panorama card, or getting coins, or just a variety of different things, buying souvenirs, or getting free souvenirs, and things like that. Uh, here we go to our first panorama. Green is going to get to move again since they were in last. And this will give you an example of what panoramas do. So this is a Bryce Patty. Uh, I'm going to skip ahead here to the mountain. And over here is a C. There's three different types of panoramas, and they all have a matching deck like this. Now, as you see on the back here, there's a 1, a 2, and a 3. And what you'll be doing the first time that someone hits a panorama spot, so in this case, the green player hits the first green one, they're going to take the number 1. And that's how many points it's worth, so they would put that in front of them. Now, let's say later in the game that green uh, hit another green panorama spot here. Uh, later on in the, in the journey, or maybe they collected one through a power or a card, they would get the two, and it would be worth that many points. And as you can see, the cards match up, and they actually do make a little picture here, which is really cool. I really like that little aspect of it. And with green, it goes up to three. So if they hit a third one, they would complete that panorama, get the maximum points of six points total, one, two, and three, and that would be a completed panorama, which might get them a bonus at the end. Again, we'll go through that in a bit. Now, the Rice Patty is one of the uh, bonus cards. The other ones are the Mountains, which go all the way up to four. So you get a little more points for those that are just a little harder to collect as well. And the C, which go all the way up to five. Again, uh, harder to collect, but worth more points. And they're, they all connect in similar fashion to make a picture. So that's another way of scoring points, in, in, in addition to creating sets via the uh, already mentioned souvenirs. So let's skip ahead to purple and they're gonna go to the hot springs. Hot springs are really simple. They're these teal cards and they're just worth however many points are listed here. So three points for that one. Pretty basic. Uh, the rest of these are gonna be panorama. The one interesting car, uh, spot here that we haven't used is called a farm. This is this yellow spot here. And that'll just get you three automatic coins. It's really the only way to make coins outside of different uh, encounter cards that might give you coins. So that's how that goes. So in this case, this spot was skipped. Let's say green wanted to move there. Green could move there. Oops, sorry. Take that card, and then purple could move past, and then green gets a chance to move again. So yellow has to wait a whole extra round before they move, because whoever's last always goes first. It doesn't just go clockwise. And that's kind of where the movement is really interesting for me. I, I really like the fact that it's open movement, at least up until this next village. You can jump ahead if you're afraid someone might take your spot, if you really need money, you might jump to the farm ahead of time and prevent other people from taking that from you. But you miss out on your chance on a vista. What if you go here and you really need the money? Then someone else has got bound to get that farm. So it's a it's a matter of balancing what you need and what you think you can get away with. And in this case, Gold didn't think they could get away with it. You'll also notice a couple of these spots have extra dots on them as well. Uh, the extra dots are in larger player games. Four and five player games open up the uh, lo some of the locations up to two, where two people can stop there. Uh, but in three and lower, then you don't have that option. So the play goes very similarly. The characters keep hopscotching each other, moving ahead in the pack, until they finally... Oops, moved him first. Finally get to the end. So let's say 
Purple jumps ahead to the end. They take the first spot at the end, and they'll actually draw four of the food cards. In this case, four. It's one more than the amount of players in the game. And they can look at these, and they would buy a piece of food. And each of the food, uh, all the foods were six points. It's all worth exactly the same. Uh, but some will cost more than the others. Now, the reason for this is uh, the cheap food you can buy now, but you can't buy the same food more than once. So I could buy this uh, uh, nigiri meshi, but I cannot buy this same food again later in the game. So I can buy it for cheap now, but if I happen to get that as the only cheap option later, then I have to buy something that's more expensive. The other benefit to buying more expensive food is there's a, there's a bonus if you have collected the most coins worth of food. Uh, across the board, there are four different spots for food, so you'll have the chance at four different cards. So if you have the max amount of coins on there, uh, and you have more coins than everyone else on your food cards, then you have a chance of scoring bonus points. And uh, it just keeps going like this for the four different sections. As people get here, there's less uh, food to choose from, obviously. And then you start over in the next section with the last person that got to that village going first, so on and so forth, uh, so forth until the end of the game uh, where you count up the points. Uh, let me go through one more aspect of the game here that makes a pretty big strategical difference, actually. So I'll look at two things in particular here. Uh, one is the characters, and two are the achievements. Now, characters first. At the beginning of the game, you're dealt two characters randomly face down, and you select one of those two. The reason these are important is because each one's going to have a different starting coin value and a different power, and the power might guide your strategy a little bit. So in the case of, uh, let's look at Mitsukuni here. He starts off with six coins, which is a decent amount, and he has a bonus here at the bottom of one. It has iconography, but it's all explained in the rules. In his case, uh, well springs or hot springs and achievement cards are worth one extra point. And these achievement cards are kind of like bonuses for hitting certain goals. So he's going to want to aim for getting achievements and landing on hot springs, not necessarily hitting temples and things like that. Uh, Chupe here, whenever he takes uh, food, he can take an encounter card. He only starts with four coins, but he pretty much gets a bonus just for landing at the end. So it's a it's a kind of a free, uh, free bonus of either coins or maybe points, but he gets a pretty good free bonus at the end of every, uh, every little stint on the road. And over here, Hiratata focuses mainly on temples. Now he does start with eight coins. The reason he starts with eight coins is because he's encouraged to visit temples, and temples are where you have to pay coins to get points. He does have a slight bonus, though, in the fact that when he visits the temple, you automatically donate a coin to the bank, or a coin from the bank, to that temple. And so it kind of evens itself out a little bit. And there's ten of these different characters, so there's a lot of variation in the fact that you can play, a, play the exact same route, but you'll be focused on different things. Some guys buy souvenirs cheaper. Uh, some people deal with uh, food items, buying food cheaper, or uh, doing different things with different types of cards with panoramas, getting free panorama cards. So there's a lot of different options available to you, a lot of different strategies. Now these achievements are going to tie into pretty much everything we've talked about. Uh, we have three different uh, different panorama achievements here, which have the blue back, the little, the little uh, white uh, luck cat there. So the first person to complete the, the patty uh, panorama gets three bonus points. First person to complete the mountain gets three. First person to complete the sea gets three. And here on the black luck cats here, we have some other achievements, which will include whoever has the most souvenir cards getting three points, whoever has the highest amount of coins on their food, that one I was talking about earlier, gets three, the most amount of hot springs cards, and the most amount of encounter cards. There's also one more important achievement, which is the temple achievement. And that was that little uh, marker we had at the top of the board there. Whenever you donate coins to the temple, it goes to the board itself and keeps track of how many coins each player has donated. And at the end of the game, uh, based on how many you've donated, the first person gets 10 points and then decreases the amounts after that second seven points and just keeps going down. So if you've donated the most, most of the temple there during the game, uh, you get a pretty hefty bonus compared to the rest. It's 10 points is, is a pretty huge swing. So that's really the gist of the game. You're trying to walk down this path. The movement is more about preserving your own strategy without getting cut off and out without overextending yourself. Well, there's a ton of different ways you can score points. You can score through souvenirs, through, through uh, panoramas, through food, through hot springs. There's just an open-ended amount of strategy in this game. So... Let me give you my final opinion on it, and you can make your decision for yourself. So guys, that is Takedo. Now, I was a little bit worried when I first saw Takedo, because I really loved the art style, 
but the gameplay looked a little bit simple for me. I shouldn't have been worried though because I was already a fan of the designer and he came through again with the Kaido. This is a great game. It, the strategies are very simple. It's just different types of things score different points, but everything scores points. So pretty much whatever strategy you choose, you can do well in it. You just have to kind of diversify a little bit. You want to get some souvenirs, you want to get some food, you want to get some encounters. It's just picking and choosing your battles is where, where the real fun lies to me. The movement mechanic is where the majority of the strategy comes from, where the entire strategy comes from, and it's so much fun to me. Blocking spots, uh, trying to decide, am I going to jump ahead to get that farm to get those three coins I need to buy the food? Maybe one of my friends, though, is playing the character that donates stuff to the temple, so maybe I want to block him to go to the temple. There's a lot of thought and double think going into this that I just, I love that type of strategy, and this is just perfect for me. Now, I know some people in our group weren't a huge fan of that type of uh, free-form movement, but I, I think the areas are so small that it, it really works for this game. There's, there's only about 10 spaces between the villages, so it's really not complicated to grasp. Now, for two players, wasn't a huge fan. I'm not a big fan of uh, dummy players in two-player games, and Takedo, unfortunately, utilizes one. Um, it's not the worst I've seen. I might play it again in the future, but uh, overall, it's not my preferred way of playing a two-player game. Now, three players for me is the sweet spot because none of the extra spots on any of the villages are open. So it's just, you land on it, you block it, someone else has to skip over you to get something else. Now, that's kind of cutthroat. So if you're playing with new players, uh, maybe someone who's new to the hobby, because I do think this is a great gateway game, I believe that four and five players may be the best play way to play that because the extra spots are going to be open. You'll have a little more flexibility on where you can play. Uh, it's not as cutthroat, but it's still a ton of fun, and there's still a ton of strategy involved with it. Just a little more open, a little more friendly, I think, for players. I think three for me is the sweet spot, though, because you have all the strategy. You have all the kind of cutthroatedness of cutting people off from their spots. It's, it's just really spot on for me. Overall, guys, I can't recommend Takedo enough. Uh, thank you again, Alpha Strike Games. I will definitely be visiting you in the future. I hope you guys have great success. And you guys out there, I hope you're supporting your friendly local gaming stores because these guys uh, are local businesses, local owners, uh, usually nice, real nice guys. Get to know your owners, uh, get to know the people in your town, and support them because they provide gaming space. Again, I'll throw the uh, links in the description or the address in the description below for Alpha Strike, and uh, check out your own local game stores, guys, because sometimes you get some really cool gems like this. Thanks again for joining me in the game room, and I'll see you next time.